It's time for the Hannah Cast Movie Awards with your host, Christian Hannah. Hey, hey, hey. how's it going? How are we all doing tonight? That's great. Man, aren't some of these movies really long? I mean, I haven't even heard of some of these movies. What, you didn't like that? Oh, it's okay. My writers wrote that one. <laughs> oh, man. I keep them in the dungeon. Anyways, welcome to the Hanacast Movie Awards, the only award show where I have a say in the matter. The way it works is it's basically my Oscars. You know, I pick the nominees, I pick the winners, except the winners for Best Picture, or the winner for Best Picture, unless there's a tie or something, then I guess there would be winners. Uh, you guys vote for who wins Best Picture at the Hannah Cast Movie Awards. And today, we're going to start with the category where people get hurt. Best Stunt Design. Here are the nominees. Best Stunt Design. Ferrari, Robert Nagel. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Heidi Moneymaker. John Wick Chapter 4, Stephen Dunleavy and Scott Rogers. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, Wade Eastwood. Napoleon, Nicky Powell. And the winner is... John Wick Chapter 4! Not gonna lie, this is kind of a hard decision between John Wick 4 and Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. But Jesus Christ, the stunts in John Wick were so, so visceral. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's why it won. Anyways, now let's get into the cartoons. You know... The stuff that everyone likes to see, not just kids, Hollywood. Here are the nominees for Best Animated Film. Best Animated Film. The Boy and the Heron. Nimona. Robot Dreams. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Not a Disney film in sight, just how it should have been this year at the Oscars. Anyway, the winner is... Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Again... Pretty hard t decision between this and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Or was it really a hard decision? I guess considering I gave Spider-Verse more above the line nominations, then I guess it wasn't really a hard decision. But still, great year for animated films. Disney, maybe next year. Uh, although, granted, this year's not looking so good. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, now let's get into the category where, you know, uh, people sing, because that's a lot in a movie. So here are the nominees for Best Original Song. Best Original Song. Dance the Night from Barbie. I'm Just Ken from Barbie. Peaches from the Super Mario Brothers movie. What was I made for from Barbie? You've never had chocolate like this from Wonka. And the winner is... I'm just Ken from Barbie. Again pretty easy decision here although granted there was also you've never had chocolate like this which I, i'm still listening to that song but dang it i have to give it to i'm just ken i'm still listening to that song as well so yeah sorry billy eilish uh maybe next time anyways here are the nominees for the category for the people who make the music but with no lyrics here are the nominees for best original score 
Best Original Score. The Boy and the Heron, Joe Hisaishi. Oppenheimer, Ludwig Goransson. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, Daniel Pemberton. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. The Zone of Interest, Mika Levi. Plenty of animation in sight, just like how it should have been at the Oscars. Anyways, the winner is... Oppenheimer. I mean, at, at this point, Ludwig Göransson is starting to become one of my favorite composers. I mean, Creed, Black Panther, Tenet, Oppenheimer. This guy just doesn't miss. Speaking of sounds, here's the category for one of those sound categories. Here are the nominees for best sound mixing. You know, the category where they mix the sounds. I don't know. You know what it is. Best sound mixing. The Creator. Maestro. Oppenheimer. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. The Zone of Interest. And the winner is Oppenheimer. Man, Oppenheimer's taking home a lot of awards tonight. So yeah, again, made complete sense to me. I mean, Oppenheimer, I mean, don't get me wrong, the, the Zone of Interest had some amazing sound mixing in that film, but I can't get the sound, even the sound mixing out of my head from Oppenheimer, the way the music would mix in with the sound effects, with silence and all that stuff. I mean, it's kind of a no brainer for me. Anyways, here are the nominees for the other sound core category that isn't mixing. Man, I flubbed that line, didn't I? God damn. Best Sound Editing. The Creator. Ferrari. Godzilla Minus One. Oppenheimer. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And the winner is... Oppenheimer once again. Again, look, this is one of those situations where I gotta give sound mixing and editing to both uh, Oppenheimers. Yes, I get, there's two Oppenheimers at this point. So, yeah, I can't, again, the, the sound is part, is literally the movie. Anyways, now with the sound effects out of the way, let's turn into, you know, the, like the visual effects. So hopefully this one isn't a complete dumpster fire like the Oscars was. I'm still mad over Godzilla winning over the creator, mother f Best visual effects. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. The Creator. Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And the winner is the creator. Thanks, me. You're welcome, me. That's how it should have been. Look, the, the creator just has flawless visual effects. I can't, like, they are flawless, and there's so much of it all over the place. Again, it's just like, yeah, and it swept the Visual Effects Society Awards. That's how it should have been at the Oscars. So, yeah, a, a creator, you may not have won the Oscar, but you won my Oscar. That's right. I own the Oscar trademark now. Uh, lawyer up Academy. God, I'm going to get sued. But yeah, enough with the computer stuff. Let's get into the prosthetic stuff. You know, 
Because, you know, you got to turn to someone so somehow. Although, I guess you could also do that with CGI. But this is the not CGI category. Here's best makeup and hairstyling. Best hair and makeup. Golda. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. John Wick Chapter 4. Maestro Society of the Snow And the winner is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 Man, you would think a movie that broke the record for the most prosthetics would have at least made the shortlist for the Oscars in makeup and hairstyling but just like how the creator got snubbed, uh, at, at least at the end of the day, whereas Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 didn't, didn't even have a chance, you still won in my book. So you did it. Anyways, you like clothes? You like wearing clothes? This category is for the people who make them. Best Costume Design Barbie, Jacqueline Duran. The Color Purple, Francine Jameson Tanchuk. Killers of the Flower Moon, Jacqueline West. Napoleon, Janty Yates and David Crossman. Poor Things, Holly Waddington. And the winner is... Barbie! Oh, man, yeah, yep, I'm keeping that take in. So, yeah, uh, don't really have any notes about this one because uh, Barbie had some amazing costumes. So, yeah, but now let's move on from costumes into the another category where people design things. Do you like uh, rooms? This category is for people who make all sorts of rooms. Best production design. Barbie, Sarah Greenwood. Killers of the Flower Moon, Jack Fisk. Napoleon, Arthur Max. Poor Things, Shona Heath and James Price. The Zone of Interest, Chris Otte. Uh, anyways, the winner is Barbie, once again. I mean, look, you make Barbie land, that's going to impress me because I love seeing big dollhouses. Anyways, let's move on to the next category. Best film editing, otherwise known as the category that Bohemian Rhapsody won the Oscar for, and I'm not upset over that. And yes, that is a hot take. I'm not joking about that. So yeah, here are the nominees. Best Film Editing Anatomy of a Fall Laurent Senechal Killers of the Flower Moon Thelma Schoonmaker Oppenheimer Jennifer Lame Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Michael Andrews The Zone of Interest Paul Watts And the winner is Oppenheimer. Man, take a swig for whenever Oppenheimer wins an award. Mm. Yes, a swig of water. Anyways, this right here that uh, I'm filming with, it's called a camera. You know, it, it makes moving images and it's kind of cool. The people in this next category, they know about making pictures move a lot. Here are the nominees for Cinematography. Best Cinematography. El Conde, Edward Lachman. John Wick Chapter 4, 
Dan Lauston. Maestro, Matthew Libetique. Oppenheimer, Hoyt Van Hoytema. The Zone of Interest, Lucas Zoll. And the winner is Oppenheimer once again. I mean, look, look, I, again, it is what it is. Also, you thank me for that John Wick mention. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyways, uh, you know how movies have like actors in them? Well, someone has to pick actors to be in those roles. I mean, otherwise you just have like random actors w w stumbling in a set and the director goes, I like you, let's go. Uh, these people make sure that the right people stumble into the studio and, the, and have their director go, I like you, let's go. Uh, here are the nominees for best casting. Best casting. American Fiction, Jennifer Houston. Anatomy of a Fall, Cynthia Ara. The Holdovers, Susan Shopmaker. Killers of the Flower Moon, Ellen Lewis and Renee Haynes. Oppenheimer, John Pepsidera. And the winner is The Holdovers. I mean, there's like three actors in the movie, but they're all perfectly cast. And so, yeah, let's go. Anyways, speaking of actors, let's move away from the people who pick the actors to the people who are the actors. Which actors were the best as a collective group? Best Ensemble Cast. Barbie Godzilla minus one The Holdovers Killers of the Flower Moon Oppenheimer And the winner is Oppenheimer. I mean, look, I mean, when you cast Josh Peck from Drake and Josh, that's going to get my vote. Anyways, uh, here are the nominees for Best Supporting Actress, because there are actresses out there, but some of them need a little bit of support, and these women do that. Best Supporting Actress. Emily Blunt. Oppenheimer Danielle Brooks The Color Purple Sandra Huller The Zone of Interest Florence Pugh Oppenheimer Davine Joy Randolph The Holdovers And the winner is Danielle Brooks for The Color Purple. Look, don't get me wrong. Divine Joy Randolph was a great Oscar winner, but my personal vote would have actually gone to, to uh, Danielle Brooks. I mean, good Lord, have you seen her Hell No number? I mean, my God, I love that so much. Like, that, her performance was actually really amazing. I don't even have a joke about that. But yeah, anyways, now let's get into men that need support because everyone knows that in this world, men need the most support. Best Supporting Actor Robert Downey Jr. Oppenheimer Ryan Gosling, Barbie Glenn Howerton, Blackberry John Majaro, Past Lives. Dominic Sessa, The Holdovers. And the winner is... Ryan Gosling for Barbie. I mean, look, 
Uh, don't get me wrong. Again, Robert Downey Jr. is a great Oscar winner, but, I mean, Ryan Gosling gave maybe, like, a top three best comedic performance of all time. So, I kind of do owe it to Ryan Gosling here for tackling a role that should just be a joke, but then making it so much more than just a joke. Uh, yeah. Anyways, now let's get away from the people who only support the lead actors and lead actresses, and let's get into the lead actors and actresses that are the lead actors and actresses. Here are the nominees for Best Lead Actress. Best Lead Actress. Lily Gladstone, Killers of the Flower Moon. Sandra Huller, Anatomy of a Fall. Greta Lee, Past Lives. Margot Robbie, Barbie. Emma Stone, Poor Things. And the winner is... Lily Gladstone for Killers of the Flower Moon. I mean, look... Again, you didn't win the Oscar, Lily, but you have my heart. It's in the palm of your hand, and there's a lot of red blood goo on. Like, just it's not. I don't know why. I don't. I don't know why I physically gave you my heart. Uh, that's pro that's probably very sociopathic. Is that even the right right word? I don't know. Anyways, now let's get into the lead actors. Best lead actor. Bradley Cooper, Maestro. Paul Giamatti, The Holdovers. Killian Murphy, Oppenheimer. Andrew Scott, All of Us Strangers. Teo Yu, Past Lives. And the winner is Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer. Really no notes. I mean, look, I know everyone gave Bradley Cooper so much shit for Maestro. Honestly, he would have been my second pick of this bunch. I'm not kidding. Like Bradley Cooper was that amazing in Maestro, but still... I mean, Killian Murphy was probably the most memorable performance of the year. His performance was, like, not showy, yet was showy, if that makes sense. But yeah, and here we get to the next category, Best Non-Binary Performance. And the nominees are... Best Non-Binary Performance. Kaimana, Next Goal Wins. Leo Michel Mutt. Bella Ramsey, Chicken Run, Dawn of the Nugget. Zoe Tarakis, Talk to Me. And the winner is... Leo Michel for Mutt. I'm telling you, like, if you haven't seen Mutt... Go watch it. And Leo Michel gives a devastatingly good performance. You know, they are just, like, actually really, really good in the movie. As were a lot of these other performers. So, yeah. I don't really have any much else to say, but, like, it's just re really good performance and a really good movie. So, yeah. Now, let's get to the screenplay categories. Because movies don't write themselves... But studios are going to try to convince you that AI can, and by God, don't let them think they can get away with that. Please don't. This isn't a bit anymore. I'm actually really scared right now. Yeah, here, here are the nominees for Best Adapted Screenplay. Best Adapted Screenplay. Barbie, written by Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach. Blackberry, written by Matt Johnson and Matthew Miller. Oppenheimer, written by Christopher Nolan. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, written by Phil Lord, Christopher Miller, and Dave Callaham. The Zone of Interest, written by Jonathan Glazer.
And the winner is... Oppenheimer, written by Christopher Nolan. My God, I'm kind of shocked this wasn't anywhere close to winning the Oscar because you would think a movie that was like sweeping the Oscars this much and had such a dense, layered screenplay with such amazing dialogue and a way of writing the screenplay, you would think that would win. But and yeah, it just won nowhere, not even the BAFTAs. And this is not the shit on American fiction. American fiction had a great screenplay. Hell, if I'm being honest, nominating this category was the hardest category to nominate because so many movies that deserve nominations couldn't fit in here, like American fiction, like Killers of the Flower Moon, you know, like All of Us Strangers, like Society of the Snow, a bunch of these other movies. Godzilla Minus One was one that I hated leaving out, but there can only be five slots and ultimately, I, I feel like Oppenheimer not only was the best written adapted screenplay of the year, I think it was the best written movie of the year. So, uh, yeah, sorry to whoever wins original screenplay, but uh, you're still getting this prize. Best original screenplay. Anatomy of a Fall, written by Justine Trier and Arthur Harari. The Boy and the Heron, written by Hayao Miyazaki. El Conde, written by Pablo Lorraine and Guillermo Calderon. The Holdovers, written by David Hemmingson. Past Lives, written by Celine Song. And the winner is... The Holdovers, written by David Hemmingson. I mean, again, this movie is such a really tightly knit film. The dialogue is amazing. The story is familiar, yet feels like it's just brand new. I love this screenplay. It's so well, like, this is like exactly what I think of when I think of like, yeah, this is like great writing. This is like great dialogue. Not to say that screenplay is only the dialogue. Absolutely not. Hence why Oppenheimer won adapted screenplay. But I mean, it's a movie that's impossible not to charm you. And a lot of that comes from the writing. Now we get to Best Director, a category which, again, was pretty hard to condense to just five nominees. Regardless, here are those people that directed. Best Director Greta Gerwig, Barbie Jonathan Glazer, The Zone of Interest Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer Celine Song, Past Lives. Joaquim Dos Santos, Kent Powers, and Justin K. Thompson for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And the winner is... Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer. I mean, look, Christopher, I'm just saying, Christopher Nolan already has two uh, uh, Handicast Movie Awards as is for Best Director and uh, he might get more in the future. He's just the GOAT, in my opinion. He's just the GOAT. And this time, he actually does have the Oscar to go along with this. So, that's cool. Anyways, now we're getting into Best Picture. Again, this is voted on by you guys, and if you don't like the winner, I'm not apologizing. Like, that's your fault. You, you should have chosen better. But regardless, here are the nominees for Best Picture. Barbie, Blackberry, Godzilla Minus One, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, and The Zone of Interest. And the winner for Best Picture of 2023, chosen by you, is... The Zone of Interest. Wow, okay. I'm not upset over this. 
I'm kind of shocked that people went out of their way to go for this movie. Okay, this isn't even a bit. Like, I'm lo I, when I was watching the votes just kind of crank up, I was like, wow, Oppenheimer is getting a few awards, but, like, uh, it kind of wasn't really a contest when, when you actually look at the results. Like, the zone of interest was leading by a considerable margin, which is weird because among these other categories, the zone of interest... I didn't pick it to win anything, not even sound mixing. Although I guess if there were a best international film category, the zone of interest would have won that, but still I'm kind of surprised, but I'm not necessarily upset over that. I mean, among the Oscar nominees, you know, uh, the zone of interest would have been my second pick to win, but yeah, if you haven't seen the zone of interest, it's currently on max, uh, at least as of when I'm recording this, if you're seeing this like a few years down the line, uh, I'm sorry, you know, I don't know. I don't know where you'll be able to watch the zone of interest. I mean, uh, I don't know where Hollywood's going to be in a few years, but, uh, yeah. Anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching the Hanacast movie awards. I'm sorry. I haven't posted anything for like over a year, like over a month, it's near, it's getting ready to be two months. I, I really need to get back on this, but yeah, I just been trying to get ready for the Hanacast movie awards. I really shouldn't ha put it off this late. Cause I had to watch a bunch of movies in one go. So yeah, that's not good for me, but yeah, regardless, uh, what do you think of the Hanacast movie award nominations and winners? Do you like them? Do you not like them? If you don't like them, uh, out of luck, make your own award show. Okay, uh, bye. <laughs>